So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Madam Rector, thank you for giving me a chance to talk to you today. I hope that this complication <laughs> with my hair was the, was the only one. And uh, I, uh, I try to be uh, interesting after this lovely presentation of uh, Madam Rector. I have no movie for you, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but uh, I think uh, the atmosphere is uh, uh, the proper one after that. And of course, uh, I very much closely follow what uh, was said about uh, the past conferences. I can only congratulate uh, to this because these are really themes we are all trying to solve uh, during our work. And I think uh, it's really something which goes uh, very quickly and very often to the practice. What I prepared for you, what I wanted um, uh, to speak about today is actually uh, to bring um, your attention to the situation that we really live in an uh, enormously interesting time. Um, political landscape is changing in front of our eyes, um, uh, for instance, the Middle East. And so, you know, uh, the world which we knew 20 years ago doesn't exist anymore. It's not only political uh, political situation. It's also about uh, the landscape of economy. It's a landscape of uh, employment, and uh, all the parameters which are bring uh, with that. The way how we communicate is completely different. Uh, the way how we cooperate, the work can be done uh, where in whatever place in the world, uh, in proper time with proper people, uh, whatever we want. And uh, it, of course, influences uh, the demand we have uh, on quality of people, on uh, their education, on their abilities. Uh, the employment um, uh, moves already from primary sector very strongly to services, especially to services, uh, and areas based on knowledge. Uh, uh, the division between the product and the services look linked to the product uh, is much less sharp. It's really um, uh, diminishing and uh, uh, disappearing. Uh, also, we see that uh, the most effective uh, or most profit is done uh, on services or certain parts <coughs> of the productive uh, chain. And um, uh, it's dividing now countries on developing and developed ones. Uh, unfortunately, we were very long time treated as developing country and uh, we are well positioned for that and now we were well positioned and now we are going to change. So even um, new technologies like 3D prints are changing rapidly uh, the, the market, the economy, because um, the savings uh, which were um, reached through um, amount of products it's now disappearing. Unit, uh, single uh, product can be done the same uh, very effective way. Oh, wants to install something. Okay. So here uh, you can see how uh, previous FDI uh, helped our economy to grow. Uh, you see here years 2005-2007, but uh, actually this growth lasts for 10 years and uh, our economy grew about 47%. So if we see here the year 2009, it of course means that uh, it might be just an uh, exceptional year. and. Uh, um, it doesn't mean too much for the economy currently. The problem is um, that uh, the previous recipes uh, for growth don't function anymore. And th this is what we have to deal with very closely. Here you can see how it looks if we compare Czech Republic uh, with uh, other European countries. Um, we are the fourth best in Europe in terms of GDP growth, um, better many times than Germany or UK. But uh, what's interesting, and we should look uh, to it uh, much closer, it's uh, the real wonderful growth in Slovakia. Here uh, you can see um, the, uh, these branches, which uh, help us to create uh, more than 280,000 jobs. Uh, during uh, years 2000 and 2008, you see it's, uh, of course, 
automotive, but it's also metal processing, uh, electroengineering, business services already, which is a good sign. And there are some losses like agriculture, textile, which we all know. Um, but um, uh, this um, FDI, is, uh, as we uh, knew it uh, from the past, actually um, went uh, over uh, dealing with low value at uh, uh, economies and jobs, and um, it's uh, changing now here. You can see what happened uh, during the recession. Uh, we created 122,000 uh, jobs less. Uh, so, and again, who was uh, the growing ones? Healthcare, education, IT, public administration, finances. But what was, uh, uh, where were the losses? Is machinery, textile, even automotive. So, uh, uh, have a look uh, from another point of view to these figures. What it means? It means that uh, manufacturing industry, it's not an engine of the economy, driving force of the economy anymore. Uh, there was a strong decline of number of uh, jobs, as well as some continuing in agriculture. So altogether, uh, we lost about 200,000 jobs. And new jobs, uh, which is not small amount, uh, more than 60,000, were created in uh, sectors which are consuming uh, the state budget. They are not contributing to the state budget. And this is something uh, what we really have to be very much aware of. And uh, we have to look how to go out from, from this. Here you can see, I took it from uh, 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 Czech Invest, some figures from Czech Invest, and uh, make uh, for you uh, this uh, picture to show uh, how new jobs uh, were created. This uh, very dark R-based, uh, it's actually R&D uh, investment. Um, and uh, this light blue is, uh, is services. I, I hope you can, you can read it. So uh, what to say? Uh, the previous interest investors uh, of investors is again growing. You can see that. But uh, comparing the previous years is really a fragment. Uh, just a very small amount. And the problem is that for another growth uh, on uh, a high value at uh, base, uh, we don't have enough people, as I will show you. And this uh, says, uh, uh, the downline shows um, how many people, what is the proportion uh, of uh, people in uh, science and technologies in the population. Um, the other one says, uh, what is the quality? Uh, how many specialists are in it? Let's continue. Here, you can see all uh, northern countries and uh, Switzerland uh, and Netherlands. And these countries actually are those who have within the population a high proportion of highly qualified people. And they are wonderful quality. They are really not only um, doing or being employed, that these are really experts, uh, and this is the reason why, why, this, uh, why they are so successful. Of course, it means that uh, many of them, like Denmark and others, they are already outsourcing the low-profile jobs outside. Here you can see the majority of, uh, of countries, uh, this good a good um, level like uh, Germany, UK, France, EU27, EU15, uh, which uh, also means uh, similar characteristics li like uh, before. And interesting uh, picture is that one because it shows that uh, many of new member states, Poland, Hungary, Malta, Romania, Bulgaria even, they uh, don't have so many people in the population uh, working in these areas but they are excellent quali quality. And um, now I don't know if I even should show you that. So this is our sad fact. Uh, we have quite a lot of people in these sectors, but um, uh, their, their quality is really uh, low average. So this is something we have to build on. Let's have a look um, for these factors. Uh, we are now losing uh, uh, the major advantages we had for 
a previous growth. Uh, I will just show you quickly. Cost advantage. Uh, we are already one of the most uh, expensive countries in the region. Our uh, wages are four times bigger than uh, wages in China, uh, um, in, uh, than wages in, uh, in Balkan. Uh, we are um, far more expensive than um, the Balkan countries, but also than Poland, than Slovakia. Uh, we really have uh, um, having uh, the economy based on uh, energy demanding <coughs> sectors. We also have uh, this growing uh, price of the energy, other, other costs. And uh, we have to keep European legislation, which, uh, which is not the case for non-European countries. And of course, it brings uh, some, uh, some uh, money as well. Here, availability of qualified uh, workforce. Uh, I think we are not the only country which, is, uh, which has the aging population. And um, our young people, since um, population become is, is more rich, they already are uh, going to easier life and they don't privilege technical and natural fields of, uh, of their study. It has uh, very strong uh, consequences to our economy. Uh, we already see that uh, certain strategic sectors like energy uh, don't have enough qualified people. For instance, in energy sector, we have 54% uh, of uh, specialists in pension age which means about 3,000 engineers, which means about 9,000 secondary school specialists. And our education system is not able to fulfill the gap. Uh, that's why we already pre started prepare a, a program where we go to the market, bring engineers, give them second master, and so, so just non-standard uh, non uh, ways of solving. Then the global economy shift. Uh, we were successful uh, shifting our economy uh, to export to Western countries, uh, Western Europe, but uh, as we all know, uh, these uh, markets are already full. They are not growing so quickly, and uh, we have 84% uh, going to the West and uh, only 16% outside of Europe, and we have to deal with, with this issue as well. Okay. Oh, did I forget something? Uh -huh. Territorial proximity, at, uh, of course, it's uh, also something which is uh, very important. Uh, being for a long time only suppliers, we have no access to final consumers, which uh, meant that we haven't been under pressure to innovate, to use research as the basis for new production and so on. There are many consequences, but I don't have time to go to the details, but it's a problem as well. Uh, it means, uh, this is the Michael Porter, um, uh, Michael Porter uh, picture showing um, the economies. Uh, we are just, uh, we were so successful in this economy uh, being driven by investment, uh, the middle one. But uh, now more and more we are nearly uh, to, to change the profile to the economy based on innovation which means uh, I am talking about the knowledge triangle and the this purposes which you knew, knew to be able to go to um, higher value at operations. And I think our companies will have then to, uh, to outsource also, also their, uh, uh, their low, uh, low production. Okay, have a look what it means. So these are the, new, the factors uh, which are needed uh, for uh, innovation, for innovation uh, economy. Um, indicators say quality of research institution, innovation potential, and so on. You can read that. Look where we are in this, in the world ranking. I think it shows a lot. Uh, availability of scientists and engineers, fifth, 50s uh, uh, in the world and so on. So the question, which is very natural, says, will this be enough for us? Uh, the world is not waiting. Uh, the changes are so quick that um, there is uh, nothing to think if yes or not. It's here. Um, additional to that, we still uh, will have uh, uh, some strong industry in the Czech Republic, but uh, as we see, um, the many of jobs disappear. It wasn't because uh, the industry is uh, fault, but because of the crisis, they really uh, went to the effectiveness 
they change uh, many people into machines, etc. And um, I think it's a healthy process for companies, but of course for the state it means a lot to, to be solved. Uh, that's why our uh, future economy will very much rely on quality of technical uh, graduates um, on secondary level. Uh, actually, we need um, most of all the secondary level people, but uh, for, the, uh, for the production we did until now. The problem was that uh, we had very low uh, proportion of tertiary educated people in the population, and the priority of the country was to really increase this figure. Now um, it's uh, more or less about 60% uh, uh, children going dead, and of course it has uh, impact to the quality um, because the population is declining. That's why uh, also the demand uh, for quality and uh, push to students is going down. And uh, it was quite actually acceptable for this uh, until this period of time because it didn't matter too much what was uh, the qualification of it. So our education looks like that. It's moving that way. So you can see that um, in uh, year 2015, uh, we will have really uh, more than 50% of uh, graduates in, uh, in, uh, in tertiary education. And of course, uh, we are also losing secondary level, both uh, the apprenticeships and, uh, and schools. Um, it is not so, uh, it means that now we either will uh, not move uh, we will be and we will be short of secondary schools profiles or if we move to the knowledge-based economy, uh, we need to improve quality of tertiary educated kids. Um, there is a just a quick, um, quick piece uh, which shows how is the innovation situation in the Czech Republic. I should say that um, innovation as a term is for the first time in the law, in the act, only since 2008. It really wasn't uh, carefully uh, treated. And uh, I also see we have now many strategies about innovation, new concepts, and so they are all using very uh, aggregated figures which say nothing. And only now the Ministry of Industry is preparing big projects where we go to uh, the strategic plan of uh, industries and we have to see where we are because, you know, uh, we see that maybe some of the measures uh, which are even introduced on European level are not suitable for our economy because uh, the measure, uh, uh, intervention which, it's, uh, which we need to help us require that we know if we are just copying economy or if we even produce high, uh, high uh, quality innovation and all these levels uh, in between. And um, we are using some measures, and uh, the question is if they are the right ones. What you see here is uh, how we move uh, in university graduates. Uh, really, it's uh, the growth uh, is here about 80% uh, in, in figures. But uh, if you see the technical nature uh, and natural, uh, natural, it's uh, of course a very, very slow one. And we are losing many people because big companies are searching for the best students. They can pay them far better than small companies, but they are not so creative there. And they are losing uh, their really potential to be innovative and to go that way. But again, it's, uh, it's a very big issue and uh, it would take time. Not only uh, how the situation is uh, in, uh, in edu our uh, education for 15 years old still require the changes. So I hope that uh, the education reform uh, for tertiary education is still under preparation, that it will be really finalized because what we need to go to university degree to say clearly uh, that uh, there are differences between those who are doing perfectly because in finances it doesn't matter if you are regional small university or Charles University, uh, the finances are the same. And also, uh, we need to say clearly what is uh, the uh, vocational-oriented uh, bachelor degree. It's not uh, still uh, taken as a final production. 80% of our bachelor, uh, bachelor students go to masters. 
And uh, of course, we need to give uh, support charts for development of uh, uh, research-oriented universities. Again, uh, there are many things in it, but I will just few words about universities. We have about 73 uh, universities, um, and only 26 of them have uh, research outputs. 26. And of course, it's against the law because our law says that uh, the academics in universities uh, are obliged to uh, allocate half of the time to teaching, half of the time to research. Uh, we have uh, about 37,000 uh, of academics uh, in the universities, so there should be 18,000 uh, researchers actually. Yeah, and. Uh, I am asking uh, where, are the uh, where are the results, but again, it's for uh, it could be only <laughs> um, um, a speech about uh, this issue. Here only uh, you can see uh, we have about forty-two thousand researchers. For one applied uh, output, we have nearly twenty published outputs. <coughs> so this is not what we really need to increase the performance of our economy. Uh, we have quite a lot of money. We built new big infrastructures. We have money for researchers. We have also program for reintegration. We have uh, programs to attract foreign specialist professors to come. Um, but uh, the question is if we use it properly and uh, we try to follow that because it's really a chance. I am coming uh, closely to the end, um, the vision. Um, we have in this country a lot. Uh, the only condition for our success is that we agree, uh, decide, and have consensus that we want to be successful. Because all the potential is here. We just need to uh, implement the reform <laughs> of universities. We know how we have wide book. Professor Matthew uh, was the leader of that. Uh, we had um, uh, comments uh, from uh, OECD, uh, all, all money, uh, councils, everything is in place. We have to finalize that. Um, the question is, why couldn't we, if we make these reforms, why we couldn't perform as Australia for South Asia, why we couldn't be uh, the center of, center of excellence uh, in education for West Asia or Far East. So uh, we also need to finalize the reform of R&D. I didn't speak about that much. We made the reform and uh, uh, we established within that uh, the technology agency. There are many things we do, but we have to care about the doctorants and people for the highest, uh, the top people. Um, to develop innovative potential, I said already a few words about that. And then, when we have it, we have to change uh, um, the picture, how our country is perceived abroad. We, s we are seen as enormously successful with FDI, with foreign direct investment. This is the truth. But we need um, partners around the world to understand that we also have very strong, uh, even small now, uh, teams which are working with the United States. We became one of the 11th members of American Club for Research, so we have access to the highest floors of secret American research because uh, of uh, being, uh, being closely <laughs> watched by them and being accepted that. They set up here the Agency for Cooperation in Research uh, in uh, uh, Central and Eastern Europe. There are only five around the world, including ourselves. So uh, we really achieve uh, many, uh, many new um, results. And uh, we need now to actually build on that, uh, to give strong uh, input or strong emphasis um, to, um, to the best of what we have and say, we are belonging to those, we are not a developing country anymore, and we want to be partners of those who are the best as well. So this is how I see the future. Thank you very much.